Hello and welcome back to class. You're almost done. Hopefully you've made it this far. Just one last video. And in this particular video, it, it, we're really trying to focus on um, having you apply what you've learned and, uh, and, and take real tangible steps towards launching something. So as we uh, discussed in, in prior videos, there's meant to be really a, a frequent process of learn and refine in a business going from idea to, to operating business with customers, right? We, we rarely get it right uh, in the first version of a business model canvas. So uh, how can you do that? Well, partly uh, it's through things like uh, surveys, whether it's electronic surveys, think uh, you know, tools like SurveyMonkey or otherwise, or even better yet, whether it's face-to-face uh, -face live discussions with customers or prospects, go down a few rabbit holes, uh, if you will, to really ask all the follow-on questions to really understand um, the, the barriers and, and needs and desires of, uh, of, your, of your prospects. So what are they like, dislike, what are they currently using uh, now? Is it good enough? Why is, why is it not good enough? And then will they pay? Can they pay? What can they pay? So validate and refine. Similarly, as I mentioned in, in the prior video on the business model canvas, in this process of, of gaining feedback, you and your team uh, will want to uh, update your business model canvas. Name your company. Now, there are, there are branding firms which, which get paid very large sums of money to come up with names uh, for companies. So this is not an easy task. Uh, I've done it wrong many times and, and changed names of, of prior companies. You know, some, some guidance, you want to you make it easy to spell, short enough to remember, uh, indicative, hopefully, of what your business uh, does and unique relative to competitors. You know, here are three pretty good examples of, of names and brands. If you Google bad startup company names or some such phrase, you'll see lots of examples of, you know, misspelled words, intentionally misspelled words, but very, very hard to remember. If you're listening to the radio, to TV, to a podcast, and there's a, a commercial, an advertisement, and somebody has to spell the company name, then it's a bad company name. <laughs> Generally speaking, it should be easy to remember, easy to spell. Now, you know, that, that, that business model canvas really can form the basis uh, for website language. And, you know, you don't need a super complicated website. You need a, 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 a place where folks can go to, to validate you, to validate your business, to see what you're about. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you're, you're, you're generating business through um, more one-on-one -on -one contact, and then somebody is checking out your website to make sure you're legitimate, you're real. Now, the other pathway is that your website is the main, sor the main source for, for leads. So know the difference for sure. Uh, but, but this is really so, so easy to do. You do not need an IT consultant to do this. You can, of course, if you have the funds and want to get a fa really, really fancy website. But with tools like a Weebly, like a Squarespace, and many, many, many others, it is literally drag and drop to get really, really nice looking um, uh, basic websites. You need a real business email address, right? So you don't want, you know, so-and-so business name at gmail.com, at yahoo.com, at pick your, pick your other uh, more kind of personal website provider. So, you know, Rackspace, um, uh, G Suite, the formerly called uh, uh, Google Apps, uh, GoDaddy, lots of other places will, uh, will do email hosting and allow you to have um, uh, an email that looks professional, which is what you what you want, obviously. You need to be able to send something to somebody when they need or want to learn about your business. So often this takes the form of a one-page summary of your business. You want it to look really nice. Uh, so don't do what I did early on, was to try and design it myself. Uh, get somebody who's more expert in using graphic design software uh, to do it, to make it look pretty for you once you have the content ready. And then convert it into a PDF as the, as the electronic document that you send around to uh, prospective partners and customers. Please, please build an advisory board. We, you, I, just don't know what we don't know. And, and look, the, the structure can be uh, extremely variable on advisory boards. This is not a board of directors, by the way, which would have some control over decisions made by your company. 
An advisory board would be, look, you're looking for experts in your field that can both be expertise in the particular subject, let's say energy or real estate, and also aspects of growing a business, say marketing or finance. Uh, but um, you know, often these these advisors are are excited to see to help a a, a younger company um, uh, uh, grow. Uh, it, it's great if you can also uh, motivate them financially uh, to do so. Uh, but anyway, nothing like having uh, an extra set of of um, uh, wise folks rooting for your success and hopefully holding you somewhat accountable uh, to to the, the milestones, the goals you set forth for you in the company. You will likely need channel partners to help sell your service or product. So if you're in the online space, this is you know perhaps um, affiliates. Uh, if you're selling, oh, I don't know, uh, online courses, you may do you know uh, a joint venture with others who sell online courses who maybe sell to the same uh, 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 type of of customer but provide different products. So you you kind of team up and share the success. You split the profits essentially from those marketing. A campaign so you can motivate these channel partners financially to get you in front of their audiences. You got to prove that you know something about uh, about your sector, about your your um, your industry. Let's say a blog is one way to do that. Now, look, there are are <laughs> there are far too many blogs out there. Uh, many are not good, and so there is you know a bit of content overload. However, a consistent blog is often the most visited part of a, of a website. Now, it's important to do it regularly, uh, perhaps one or, or two times the same day every week to share that through your social uh, networks. And some research suggests you either go very short and very frequent or you go less frequent but much, much more uh, in-depth. So think about Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N. He's produced a very short uh, blog. Uh, every day for many years, and it's one of the most widely read blogs in the world. There are examples of others who write, you know, almost a small book, thousands of words for a blog, but only write once every two weeks or once every month or once every two months because it's so such rich content. Another format you can think about is are, are, are Q&A. What are the most frequent questions that come up in your industry around your product type? How can you write great, great answers to those that are evergreen? That's the other thing is, if you can write evergreen content, something that's relevant, not just during the week of a certain news headline, but over the course of a couple of years, you're likely to get more traffic from, from that. The last slide here on lunch, um, aim for a high touch approach that does not scale at first, get out of the office, uh, talk to customers who are happy and less happy, let's say, um, those who said, who said no to you, why did they say uh, no? So learn and refine your business. Again, this is not a stone carving exercise, all this is meant to be iterative. Key conclusions, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Launch before your business is 100% ready. Some say the only way to learn is by doing, not by thinking about it some more. Number two, your first business idea is likely not the one that will succeed. Remember, failure only happens when you give up. Now, when you fail, it's hard to keep that in mind, but again, you, you should expect that things will not work out and then you need to find path around those roadblocks. Lastly, it's never been easier to start a new business in most countries. The tools are more available and the cost lower than ever. So what I'm saying is, when should you start a business? Now, right? I mean, maybe not right this very second, but yes, now. There's never going to be a perfect time, but now is as good a time as has been, broadly speaking, to start a new business. Lastly, questions for you. What's holding you back from launching the new startup or corporate initiative that hopefully you've, you've, you've kind of further refined and fleshed out during this course? Number two, what would your future look like in three to five years if you don't implement these next steps in this video and instead remain in your current job doing what you've always done? Now, look, maybe that's fine, but I'm guessing you're taking this course because there's interest for a different level of impact you're seeking to make, a different lifestyle, uh, more flexibility for your family, for friends, for causes, etc. Finally, what is the timeline for taking these next steps in this video? Write them out now 
and tell somebody, tell many people about it. Put it on Facebook or LinkedIn. Let others hold you accountable as, as kind of peers, supporters uh, along the way. So we'll see you in the very last uh, video um, and uh, really, really hoping you've paused this, this video and written an answers to these questions on this slide as you have throughout the whole, the whole course. The time is now, right, to put this into practice.